My name is Gary Blum. I'm an, a resident of Oxnard. I am a descendant of a longtime farming family that came here back in the 1870s, and I'm involved with a lot of activities that go on to promote our downtown area. The home tour experience, when people come to it, we focus a lot on the architecture, both inside and out, and then um, anything about the landscaping or gardening or anything about the interior decor is sort of secondary. The primary thing is the uniqueness of the buildings, the history, who built them, why did they build them, uh, who later owned them, what was their significance in the community or, or their relationship with other people in the community. So um, that's what's really, really unique about our tour. I haven't been many historic home tours that have continued on and had the legacy that ours has had. And every year, everyone gets excited about it and we do it again. And um, that's probably the most unique thing about it, is sort of the social history of the, of the community. I think uh, historic districts are really important throughout our county and in our communities. The neighborhood began to be developed right around 1903. The earliest style is typically some late Victorians where they're a little simpler in design, not as ornate, and then transitioning into the craftsman or the bungalow style that was popular in Southern California on the West Coast. And then, um, then going into the revival styles, which is the colonial revival, Spanish colonial revival, Tudor revival. Uh, and then we have a few that are um, some unique designs. We have a little bit of prairie influence and some others that are sort of in between categories. They were all individual custom-built homes, so the neighborhood evolved over probably a 40-year time span, and so there are even some that represent uh, later styles that were um, mid-century. The process to create an historic district is interesting. The, um, the committee decided to actually pursue national register status, and the reason for that is that um, at the national um, level, you do not need total buy-in support from locals. Like when you do a, a local landmark, you need to get like your city council, or your county board of supervisors to approve it. That's why we pursued the, the highest level we could reach because then any level below that would be a shoe in and it was easier that way. Probably the most significant thing that came out of the review process was the incredibly high percentage of contributing structures. And that is that not always every building within an historic district is a contributor. That is, it adds something to the value of the district. And so out of the 139, 140 parcels, there were only seven of them that were non-contributing. So when you're in a 90% plus contributing rate, that's really unusual. So we were pretty proud of that. They actually said we were one of the had the highest contributing rate um, in, in any district that they had formed recently. So that's sort of our claim to fame, that there hadn't been a lot of modification or changes, so that the, the residential area pretty much appeared as it had evolved and grown up uh, in, in the early part of the, the 20th century. So one of the side effects of that, of having this neighborhood that's evolved and sort of representing this unique period, is that uh, for photographers, videographers, uh, for filming, um, they like that. So um, we've seen a lot of filming through the years um, in, in the district. In fact, when we do our, our Christmas tours or whenever we have local travel riders coming through uh, on a familiarization trip through the community, we often take them down there and say, oh, well, this TV series used to be filmed here and this movie was filmed here. So some people like that connection to popular culture. Um, so it's, it's a unique, another unique part of the Henry T. Oxnard Historic District. Historic districts are really important throughout our county and in our communities and that, as I said, time moves forward and if you have enough of a representational style of architecture or people that lived in a community, um, there, there may be a story to be told there. So uh, often people will think, oh, there's, it's just an old neighborhood, but there might be something unique about it. So it's, it's interesting to see how time moves forward and, uh, and history does as well and uh, we should always be open-minded to preserving that.